James the Rock McQuillan, looking more rock-like today than ever before. Um, great to have you on. It's a, a cracking idea you've had. It's a fantastic year group that you've been with for seven years. And this is your chance to actually spread a bit of light or maybe a bit of dirt on <laughs> the, <laughs> the outgoing year 14. So tell me this. You've been with them for a long time. What is your best memory of your year group? Um, well, I've been with them for six years in total. Um, I took over the year group when they were at the start of second year. Uh, Mr. Trainer was a year ahead and, and, uh, and first year. And then he retired at the end of the year. And then I picked up from him, which was an honor. Um, but no, six years, it's flown on. It's crazy how quickly it's gone by. You know, you tell the boys all the time, oh, you know, your, your life in St. Collins will fly by, it'll go by in a flash, and they sit there and nod and think, I right, but it does, it does. Um, but in terms of, you know, fondest memories, there's just, there's so many. And I was having to think about this, and, like, the ones that, that, that stand out for me, um, like, the fundraising um, events that the boys had. As a year group, they organised a football tournament one year, just themselves. And they raised over a thousand pounds for St. Francis de Paul. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't heard of many other fundraising initiatives that raised as much money in, in, in one year, you know. Uh, they were super. And then, you know, I went up along with Dan Wilson and um, Brendan Tyre, who both had actually left us then. The fifth year, Ben went to Brighton for his football, and Brendan moved on um, and presented the check to St. Francis de Paul. And they were so grateful, and they were excellent with boys. And the boys, were ambassadors for the school and two great lads anyway. Um, the fundraising efforts as well, I suppose, for the, the Anthony Nolan Trust, who um, who were a great help to Warren Boyd's family during the time of his illness. Um, they, they, they held various events there and raised a lot of money that, that would be put to good use by the Anthony Nolan Trust. One of, the, one of the things that always stands out for me are memories that stands out. We had a, it was one of the annual prize givings I think it might have been at the, when they were at the start of year 11. And um, I was up calling out the, the names of the, the recipients in the year group and whatnot. And Oren Rafferty um, came up to get, I think it was a commitment prize. And anybody who knows Oren in school knows he's just a big gentle giant. He's one of the most popular lads in the year group. And Oren from first to third year was a proper old school rocker. And he had the long black hair and, and a ponytail, and uh, similar to me know, and you at the moment. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, he, he rebelled a wee bit. He loved these black jeans. He never wore black shirts. He always wore black jeans. He used to drive us the keys where it was funny. Um, but he decided to shave off his hair. And you've heard of people doing that before, and it's you know fair play to them, it's, but it's not too dramatic. But what I learned that was he, he loved his long hair and, and his own individual look, but he saved all his hair and he raised a serious amount of money and he gave it to the Princess Trust, which um, makes wigs for young children who are suffering from cancer, who are going through their various treatments. And whenever he came up on stage to get his commitment prize, I didn't tell him, and I didn't tell any of his senior management or anything like that. But when he came up on stage, I just said, there's another story I would like to tell you about Or. And uh, I told, like a packed hall, what he had done. And honestly, I don't think I've ever heard a, a, a louder round of applause and a longer round of applause, the prize given. And it was fully merited because he's just a brilliant, brilliant fella. And he did a brilliant, brilliant thing. And I know there's lads up getting academic prizes and stuff, and, and that's super as well. You, you want to see boys achieving their potential. But for me, what Oren did was more important than anything academic because it showed, it was testament to his character and, and, and his personality and how good he is as an individual. And he's not the only one. There's lots of boys in the UK like that. You know, so we hear all day talking about them, but that was a standout memory for me, definitely. Um, just got various celebrations at assemblies as well, about what boys achieved on the academic front um, and on the extracurricular front in particular. I mean, 
I'm a keen sportsman and a coach in the school and I was blessed to have such a talent at the sport in the Jaeger. You know, um, there were so many boys involved in last year's Margie success. There were, uh, in the Gaelic, there were boys involved in the hurling success in recent years. The soccer team that you would have been involved in, I mean, I think they won Northern Ireland Cups in what, first year, third year, fifth year as well. Yep, yep. Um, which is phenomenal. Um, but we also had individual achievements like you know, Callum Green, Warren Doherty, Jamie Deary, all European and, and world champion kickboxers, you know, at different weight levels. Um, <clears throat> um, there's, just, there's, there's, there's so many more I could mention as well. Um, I don't spring to mind right now. Uh, Ian Dublin, the triathlete, um, just they were superb, and I really loved um, celebrating. It made assemblies a, a more happy occasion than what they can be, let's say. <laughs> I'm very conscious of that. I, I don't like standing up assemblies and giving out. If I have to do it, I'll do it, <laughs> but I prefer to focus on the positives rather than the negatives. Um, but for you know, we the year group two, we were the first to have a, a pupil of the month. It was the first time it had been done in the school, as far as I'm aware, anyway. And because um, it was then in court, it was then basically it was put in place in all year groups in light of it as well. Um, and especially when they were key states, they really loved that. You know, they, they maybe pretended they didn't like coming and getting a certificate or being called out and stood up and getting a round of applause, but they do, they loved it. Now, it's less effective as they get older and they didn't do it as they got older, but the key states, they that's another form of memory. Um, it's not necessary. It's maybe wrong to clap, put it in the bracket of a, a favourite moment, but if you're on about you know, moments where I was really, really proud of them, I would say that um, whenever we lost Oren Void this year, um, I just seen a group of, of pupils, a group of individuals who had become men uh, in the sense that they were absolutely brilliant. In terms of being there for each other, um, they stayed strong through the whole thing. And there were so many lads in the year group who were such a brilliant, brilliant help and a brilliant support to Orange Orr at the time when he was old, but also then Orange family after he passed. You know, and whenever I was at the wake and whenever I was at the funeral and the whole of the chapel was lined up with boys in the year group, um, I was just very, very, very proud of them. And, um, there was a lot of lovely comments from members of the public, uh, and the, you know, um, basically praising the boys and how, how superb they were, how well they represented themselves in school. So, I suppose those are some of the proud moments. That, you know, I have more teary notes. I suppose the, the, the GCSE results day was great um, because so many boys did so well, and uh, I had seen the effort that they were putting in in the build up of those GCSEs too. Um, I was really proud of them the day that I walked into the, the senior library during study league. And I swear to God, every single seat in the library and every table was taken by a fifth year student. There was no sixth year there. Every single table and every single chair taken up by a fifth year people all working away. And the library staff were very complimentary about them as well. And I just, it was, I just seen them doing the right things and taking responsibility. And I was proud of them for that. And, uh, and then I suppose the first day of year 13, too, to see so many of them come, coming back because they got the results that they, they worked for. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I think there must have been about 185 out of 220 people who came back to start year 13 and maybe stand up in the hall on their first day and they to see so many of them. It was, it was great. So, no, incredibly proud of them, though, definitely. And, and we as staff, especially amongst the sports staff, we talk about this college boy and, and what it means to the school to be a college boy. Obviously, you came through it yourself. You know, you are a college boy through and through. It must be a hell of a feeling to see a year group that epitomises the, the positivity of being a college boy. Oh, no, no, definitely. I mean... Anything I asked of those boys, basically, you know, they would have, they would have listened. I'm not saying they'd have all done it straight away, but you know, we got there eventually. And you know, as you say, I'm very, very proud to be a college boy. And the um, school's done a lot for me as a pupil, and obviously now as an adult. And um, you know, 
I suppose you, you want the boys leaving the school with that same passion for it, that for me is it, as a year here. And it's just, a, not even as a year, just as a member of staff in school. For me, that's the most important thing. You know, what, what is the outcome for each individual? What, have they fulfilled their whole potential? Not their academic potential, have they fulfilled their whole person potential by the time they left? And, and this group of boys, in my opinion, definitely have, you know, and as I say, they were very, very easy bunch to work with. Like all college boys, they could be chancers, there could be risky moments, but they were easily solved because another thing that I've always asked of them anytime we had to have a, a hard conversation was, no nonsense, just be honest with me and we'll get it sorted. There might be repercussions, but the more you walk about and lead us in a merry dance here, the more difficult it's going to be. And to be honest, they all listened and they, they just, you know, that's what I was saying earlier on about them becoming men. They're, they're very responsible. That's my experience of them, though they, they're in the, in the wrong, they put their hands up and they immediately move on. So, um, no, they're definitely all college boys. They're definitely all college boys. And, you know, hopefully they'll always, um, hold on to that too and and, um, and speak honestly and highly of the school whenever they go out into the wider world and then you know, hopefully they'll be planning to come back and they visit us you know down the years and yeah. there you know if anything that we've seen in recent history of the school I mean look at the amount of past pupils that, that work in the school so I have no doubt that you know, perhaps down the line we'll see some of them coming back to work with us you know fingers crossed absolutely so on the back of that then what would be some of your funniest moments that you've had with this year group? Um, uh, there's lots again, and you know, kind of thinking you know, about mentioning names here, but I suppose they're all <laughs> the same. Right? So, uh, I don't know, there's, there's lots of moments like we go way, way back to the, to the beginning. Um, we had a pupil in the year group called Brian, not mentioning any surnames. And um, oh, I had a while out of time for Brian, you know, and they just, school wasn't easy for him, put it like that. And um, but the boys always, you know, the boys liked them, you know, and the boys always had a laugh with them. And, you know, he was, I suppose, the entertainer in the year, shall we say. And uh, me and the form teacher at the time, Mr. Glass, we were organising the Advent Mass, and so we had to get a boy from each class to play some role in the Advent Mass, and sat down with Mr. Glass and I said, look, let's get Brian a role here, you know, let's get him involved, you know, he's, he's trying to turn things around here. And so Brian got the role of lighting the, the candle on the, on the wreath, you know, on the, on the Advent wreath. And up he came from the back of the hall, walking away, and landed one of Mr. Glass's lighters from science. And he came up the front of the hall, and he started trying to light this, uh, this candle, and he, he couldn't light it. He kept missing the candle, it kept, the lighter wasn't working, and you could just hear the rise of the laughter, the laughter, the way, and even I had the laugh, you know, he, he couldn't, he made it up, it could only happen to him, you know. And uh, we got it sorted for him, but by that stage, any sort of sense of calm in the hall, you know, the respectful silence for the, the service was just forget it, it was gone, but you could do nothing but laugh. Like. Um, I remember having a conversation, another kind of one that stands out, I remember having a conversation with Alan Wilson, the young one through the saga. Yeah. Uh, uh, lots of bad. Uh, Dylan's a, you know, Dylan fancies himself, you know. And uh, I've always got a lot of time for Dylan, and uh, chatting anyway, and he was saying, oh, rough, one bad experience this weekend, what happened? He said, oh, I was chased over the, the Craig Avon Bridge by a crowd of boys from Papa Hall. Now, I, I know, like, Dylan's from across the town, and I'm a Papa Hall man myself, and I know there's a wee bit of, you know, tension there. But I said, oh, God, that's terrible, what, what were you doing? You know, what, 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 were they, what did they do that for? Why, why were you over there? They said, oh, I was going over to meet a gear. And I said, well, why did a bunch of fellas chase you? And he said, oh, because I was, the gear that I was meeting was going with one of the boys who chased me across the bridge. And I laughed, 
And I said, well, is there any wonder he's just here across the bridge? You know, he was yeah, that was just Don, you know. And he just ladies man. But uh try to think of uh, PJ Casey. You know PJ? Mm. Uh, PJ knocked himself clean out one day. You know, you hear about this one now? No. He was skipping down the maths corridor and he skipped too high at one point and walked his head off the door frame and just bumped back straight out cold. You know. Um, Rushing to I get was, to class, obviously. Oh, uh, so I was there. I heard about that one, but it could only happen to people. You know, not going to clean out by jumping on the door frame with PJ. But uh, again, another lad. You know, a lot of time for and he do very, very well for himself. He's a great boy. Um, Odin McLaughlin's trousers at the formal. Did you see him? Not even you weren't there. We had a discussion about this. You have to know socket. I agree with him. No, it wasn't the fact that there was no socket. Was, he's nice, he's tall, you know, he's leggy, you know, but it was the fact that trousers were up at his knees, basically. You know what I mean? It wasn't the fact that there was no socket. And of course, the shiniest brown shoes you've ever seen. And I was standing waiting on him as he came on the door of the city hotel. And I just looked at him and I looked down at the legs. And he went, oh, well, what's wrong with that? And I said, this is why he's up there. <laughs> so, uh, up now, I, you know, one of the things I would say about the year group two, you know, good crack room. You know, you could have a wee bit of banter with them. And they were very good humoured. You know, they could take a bit of stick. They could give a bit of stick. You know. But I enjoy it anyway. Um, all part of growing up, I suppose. And, and learning how to laugh at yourself. It's vital, vital, and they can all do that. So. so obviously, you're a big Liverpool fan. There's yeah. far, far too many of them on the staff, but yeah. I, we have one Premier League in our back pocket. I have to get that in there. But anyway, anyway, who are you going to miss most? You know, from from the fans that support other teams, who will you miss most when they've all gone? Um, no, see, to be perfectly honest, opposition fans are really keeping their heads down, you know, those last two seasons, because obviously, you know, we're champions of Europe, we're champions of the world, we're about to become, you know, champions of England, and, uh, there's not too many boys really in the year group engaging with me much these days about football, but if we go back, you know, year, if we go back in history, um, of course, you know, United fans have a lot to say for themselves, and uh, one United fan in particular who always would greet you with a comment in the corridor, maybe whenever you know, Liverpool were beat there, or dropped points here, or United had beat them, was Keelan O'Keefe. Neil O'Keefe from the Gaelic teams, like you know, they would just see him walking towards you with the, the head up, like this, here, you know, and just uh, here we go, what's he going to say now, you know? But <clears throat> I thought Keelan now, Keelan's actually been in my history class. For the last two years, and I haven't heard a peep out of them. You know, probably doesn't help the fact that behind my desk there's a big massive Champions of Europe 2019 poster, you know, and an Andrew Robertson quote. And so he's been, been very, very quick. Sean Harkins in that history class as well. He's another United fan. And uh, again, very, very quiet about football these days. You know, you usually see the wee, wee grumpy head when he comes on the door after you know, <laughs> big or something, you know. So, must wind an up. Um, there's always one Everton fan too, isn't there? So uh, Luke Durgan is an Everton fan for his sons, and uh, I mean they're just so easy to wind up anyway. You know, just butter about everything. And the funny thing about Everton fans is when you give Everton fans stick, they can't even say anything back. You know, funny. But anyway, so uh, those three boys kind of spring to mind. You know, Everton fans, Arsenal just don't matter anymore, do they? No, definitely not. Just don't count. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, uh, this year group, we've said a, a number of the good things that they've done. I'll never forget the time uh, I was with a group. Uh, we were doing a primary school Olympics, and it was for the foil hospice. And I, I can't even remember who it was, dressed up in the, the mascot's outfit and running laps of the track. And um, uh, the way that they interacted with these other pupils was just it just absolutely blew me away and it set a standard for all of the year groups to copy give us some other memories then of 
you know, the, the things that this year group has done has, has set such a high standard for everyone else? Um, well, I already mentioned, I suppose, some of the, you know, the fundraising you know, thing, events that they held and stuff like that there. And, but for me, especially this year's year 14s, you know, and, and having to be an example of the other boys, I just always felt that the boys were very mannerly. Very, very mannerly, and the son that I always wanted to be installing them in school anyway, you know, obviously most of that comes from home and, and superb parenting that goes on. Um, but I just never had any real bother with them. They were just always really kind and polite towards staff. You know, I very, very rarely got any complaints, especially from like, say, you know, fourth year onwards about any attitude or cheek or disrespect towards towards staff. Um, just very, very easy to work with. Um, so just in, in terms of how they conducted themselves, you know, there was never any messing. And when it did happen, it was like once a blue moon, it was swiftly dealt with and it, and it didn't happen again, you know what I mean? Um, but I remember you telling me about that. Was it down at Arden Sea? Actually, it was Arden Sea. That's what it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say a lot of the soccer boys were the like boys like Dylan Molson and yeah. Niall Fielding and yeah. Adam Tapper and you know, those are just some of the soccer boys and Sean Duffy and boys like that. I mean, they're just great fellas. You know, you could just sit and have a conversation with those lads in school for half an hour, no problem at all. Just because they're such affable young men. You know, so for me, that's, that's where. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, they're also very good year group academically, but I said back at the start of this interview, for me that's not the most important thing, it's the whole, the whole individual, it's the development of the person. And um, I have to say, like, you know, I think it'll be a long time before they'll be matched. And I know I'm biased, I'm really ahead. But uh, that's just my experience of them. You know, they're just, just a brilliant, brilliant bunch, so, so easy to work with. Um, took advice on board eventually, as I said. Um, so, so I, that's where they set, they set the standard in terms of how they conduct themselves and just the individuals. Decent, affable, um, humorous, kind, generous young men that they, that they are. You know, they're, they'll be a hard act to follow. You know, I'm going back the first year, next year, and it's exciting, I suppose, they, they start with a new year group, but Especially with the way things have gone in the last few months, you know, I'll be really, really sad to see these boys go. You know, um, I'm sure we'll keep in touch with them and, and whatnot as we go down the years. But the, the incoming year, it's have a, a lot they live up to, shall we say? You know, if they're anywhere near as good as as these boys, then our time will, will be a, a relatively easy one with them as a year ahead. You know? And on the back of that, then obviously this the situation of the lockdown, so we'd love to be giving these boys a good send off. And hopefully at some point, and I'm sure you'll try and plan it in there is that we will get to do that. But for now, what would be your, your last words to the boys before they, I suppose they officially leave St. Collins? Um, well, I would, just, I would just start by saying to the boys that I know that this is an incredibly Difficult time for a lot of people, a lot of families, for the pupils as individuals in terms of their normal routine and their normal daily lives being turned upside down. But I know that they're all equipped to deal with that, you know, and they will deal with it and they'll come through it and, uh, and you know, show that strength of character that they've shown as pupils in the school. Um, but I would just, first and foremost, take care of themselves, take care of their families, um, look out for them. Uh, look out for your friends as well. You have shown that you know you have been brilliant at doing that as pupils in the school. To, uh, I know you'll continue to do that now. Um, I feel very um, sad, disappointed for them that they're not getting the, the proper experience of being leavers of, of finishing their, their seven. I mean, in some cases, eight years in school for the boys who repeated up respects there. Um, and you know. Because they are missing out on something, there's no doubt about it. Um, just that sense of achievement and that sense of fulfillment at, at, at completing your seven years, you know, forget about results, to, you worry about them in August, but to get over the finishing line and to celebrate it with boys you've been friends with for seven years, um, to celebrate it with 
teachers that you've had for years, with form tutors that you've had for years. Um, they remember the good times. They remember the difficult times. Um, they've had that opportunity robbed from them, to be frank about it. Uh, and I'm very disappointed for them on that. I'm disappointed myself as a year had not they have that final celebration. I suppose that's why I was keen to, to do this as well. Um, but what I would say is I'm immensely proud of them. Um, I've you know, said it on several occasions already. They were a, a brilliant, brilliant group to work with. I'm very, very proud of them. Um, I couldn't have asked for better. Uh, they were always respectful to me. Uh, they always worked with me whenever I asked it of them. And, uh, you know, what, what I do know is that those boys are going to succeed in life. And those qualities that you exhibited, especially in the last three, four years, those qualities will serve you well as you, uh, as you go on in your in life, in your career, whatever path you, you've chosen to go down. Um, so there'll always be, you know, hold a spe like, as I said, I, I've been a pupil, I was sorry, a pupil for seven years at school. I've now been a teacher at the school for thir over 13 years. And so I have so many brilliant memories of school and uh, you know, there's a lot of people who would hold in very high regard who helped me down the years as both a pupil and a member of staff. I suppose one of the best things I could say to those boys is that they will always hold a very, very special place in, the, in my memories of St. Collins because they were such a brilliant year group and because they were my first year group and they'll always be my first year group. So because of that, they'll always probably be the ones I'll remember most of all, you know. Uh, and as I said, I, mean, you know, I will keep in touch with them. And whenever all this madness is, is over, um, be that, because I, 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 as I said in a few messages on Facebook to them already, you know, it will be over eventually. It, it will come to an end. And when it does, we will have a proper celebration. Doesn't matter when that will be, it will happen. Uh, I will make sure it happens, even if, you know, because we will have something on the school for them, and then I'm sure we'll have a, a good night out uh, as well after that, you know, and, and we can sit and have a laugh and, and have that proper final finality day uh, and that proper send off. So, very probably they have been in your head, very probably they have been in your head, and uh, I'll remember them all very, very fondly. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thanks for your time. Not move on.